the Honorable uh, Kenneth Kaunda. He was a legendary figure, if I may say so, in terms of African political development. And it's a great honor to welcome him to the program. We're here at a conference in uh, Tripoli, Libya, in April of 1997. And President Kaunda, welcome very, very much to conference. Well, thank you very much, Ned. Most welcome. It is an honor, indeed, to have Most him welcome, welcome to the program. And I wonder, mm -hmm. maybe you could, um, for the audience who is viewing, um, share a little bit. You are uh, you were a person who has been involved with and understanding the the evolution of events, particularly in Southern Africa. Maybe you could just, in a thumbnail kind of way, mm -hmm. share your own experience. You were 27 years in a position of uh, responsibility there, and you were, if I may say so, also a legendarily important pe pe uh, person in terms of helping the liberation struggle that was so characteristic of. Uh, African uh, development, but could you share a little of your own background for the people in the United States? Well, thank you very much, Ned. I, well, my colleagues and I were involved in a long struggle for independence of independence. Our country was known as Northern Odisha. Mm -hmm. um, we struggled. I joined the struggle about 1944, and 20 years later, we're independent. Yes, but that was not without a few terms of going to jail for political purposes yes. and uh, then of course we became independent in 64. We continued to support those of our colleagues around us who were still struggling for their own in liberation. I'm talking about Angola and Mozambique, mm -hmm. west, east of us. Um, I'm talking about North South Odisha, happy today Zimbabwe, Southwest Africa, Happy today, Namibia, and of course, South Africa itself. Yes, indeed. So we were involved in that struggle. Uh, thank God, in the end, all these countries have attained their independence. We're now an independent area, mm -hmm. uh, struggling for our own independence, uh, for struggling for our own development. Yes. Uh, briefly, that is the situation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. background. Rather. Yeah. And you gave a great deal of uh, support to as the people who were um, in, a search in the, in the, in the uh, liberation struggle mm. of the people around you. you have, if I may say so, sir, you've become, in a certain sense, a towering heroic figure among the young people and others in, South, uh, in the southern African region for your work that has led to the liberation of these mm -hmm. uh, people. I, as I say, congratulate you on <laughs> their behalf and mine. And, uh, but it, 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 you took a great deal of, uh, of uh, it, made, it must have been difficult at some times, or you put yourself on the line, as they say, in terms of extending that support to others. It really was a very difficult time. Mm -hmm. It led to the Portuguese from Angola and uh, uh, Mozambique, mm -hmm. to the Rhodesians, rebel Rhodesians in South Rhodesia to the South Africans in Southwest Africa, bombing us yes. and killing some of our people, mm -hmm. killing some of those who are fighting for their own liberation. Mm -hmm. All this we handled with the support of the United Nations, mm -hmm. with the support of the OAU, Organization mm -hmm. of African Unity, and indeed with the support of what's called the Commonwealth of Nations. Mm -hmm. These are the countries which were under Britain, mm -hmm. British rule, but became independent and established that common a world organization together. Mm -hmm. So all these organizations supported us. And I must say, uh, European, uh, European countries, a number of them, Scandinavian countries especially, supported our efforts. Uh, countries like Holland also, Belgium, uh, all these supported our efforts. And thank God, in the end, we succeeded. Mm -hmm. um, but not without pain, mm -hmm. without um, a loss of life, without loss of property. There was a lot of bombings, a lot of killings. It was a very difficult time. Yes. As I say, I want to thank God we succeeded Thanks in the end. Yeah, yes. It was a liberation struggle. Yes, it was truly a liberation struggle, yes. It was worth the struggle. Worth it, worth it. And what else was to be done except to... Well, after, after, after that now, of course, we have to build our economic structures. Which is a struggle of another order. Or, or another struggle indeed, to try and get our people in a position where they'll be able to live lives worth living. Mm -hmm. That is, have something to eat, yes. something to clothe, mm -hmm. something, housing, all these programs. Mm -hmm. Above all, of course, education was key. Yeah. 
So when we became independent, in spite of these problems all around us, we took off by, first of all, working very, very hard indeed uh, by building schools, what we call primary schools, mm -hmm. uh, what we call secondary schools, what we've called um, colleges, and of course ending up with two universities. Mm -hmm. uh, it was quite a program. Then we built roads, tarmac roads, going to the provinces. Zambia is a big place. Yes. Um, it's, it's not uh, a small country it's in terms of geography. Geographical area, it's a big area. Uh, as I said, area from the east, you have Mozambique, the west, you have Angola. If you looked at the map, you will see what I'm talking about. Zaire on the north of us, Tanzania, north of us. Um, Malawi, east of us, and then of course Zimbabwe, south of us. Namibia, southwest Africa. In the middle, it's quite a big portion of land there. Mm -hmm. Now, all that we covered with our schools, secondary schools, colleges, and uh, universities. And then, of course, as I said, tarmac roads to the provincial, provincial capitals. Then, of course, we built what we called um, a, a ordinary roads. Uh, Second, uh, yes, we, we, we took go to the districts, mm -hmm. from district uh, uh, development centers. We built um, ordinary small roads to development centers. Mm -hmm. So it was quite an effort, and we were proud of it. Um, and we reached a stage where we were able to feed our people mm -hmm. uh, properly mm -hmm. and uh, uh, schooling. At Independence, we only had 100 university gra graduates. No, really? Only yeah, one only 100. 70 years of Bishru. Oh, really? uh -huh. And mm -hmm. uh, 1,120 young men and women who had done their senior secondary schooling. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's what we had at Independence. Yes, huh? Now, thank God, today we have thousands of university graduates. We have doctors, engineers, and what have you. Uh, all those are there. Teachers, we produce teachers to help even our neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. where they are English speaking. We have teachers going there. Um, so we have contributed even after Independence. Mm -hmm of the other surrounding countries, we have also contributed something by way of medical personnel, our teachers, and so on and so on. Marvelous. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is marvelous you've been able to do mm -hmm. that. I wonder if you could, um, maybe, uh, there's so much we could talk about in a certain sense. One mm -hmm. would be your own personal philosophy, political, economic. I know you're mm -hmm. you very much of a humanist, uh, 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 you have a humanistic uh, endeavor. I wonder uh, if maybe we could talk a little bit of your own personal philosophy. Thank you. Because you and in the country surrounding you, there were different ideas in, in terms of how this developmental process might be you know, instigated and what the conditions were that made it possible to bring these situa the, the situation of improvement to the people. But maybe you could ground it with your own personal statement and we could talk about some of the people in the countries around you and what the broader regional problems of Africa might have been and are as we begin to look at that. Thank you. Well, really, I'm... <coughs> I, I come out of uh, parents who were uh, Christian leaders. My father was a pastor, uh, was a, a reverend. My mother was a teacher, only a teacher. And uh, they brought me up as a believer. So my personal philosophy comes out of uh, the teaching God says, we have made the human being in our image. We have made man in our image. Christ Jesus says, love thy neighbor as thou lovest thyself. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This year has been the beginning of my political thoughts as well. Yes. When I ask myself, when I do this, is it going to injure the next fellow? Mm -hmm. Is it going to help him or her? If the answer is no, I try not to do it. Right. If the answer is yes, it's going to injure them. Sorry, the answer is going to yes, it's going to injure them. I try not to do it. If it says no, then of course I try. I, I will do it. Now. Politically, this brought me to a posi position where I opposed 
everything that was against my fellow human beings, or against me, or against my interests, or against the interests of other people. For example, we had apartheid in South Africa. Apartheid? Apartheid, yes, yes apartheid. in South Africa. Racism. Mm. We had that apartheid was also in Zambia, ah. Northern Asia, right. all neighboring countries. Yeah, we all suffered the same thing. Colonial, indeed, indeed, indeed. indeed, indeed. So we had schools for white people, schools for white black people, schools for Indian national, people of Indian, national, Indian origin. We had schools for colored people mm. called colored, the offspring of black and white. Uh -huh. So we were a divided country. Hospitals, everything divided. Mm -hmm. There were places, there were towns where even roads, there were small tarmac roads on which black people could not walk, except the whites. Mm -hmm. oh. That was the background against which I was brought up, and uh, uh, which made me, when I interpreted the teaching, biblical teaching, do unto others as you have do unto you. Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor as thou lovest thyself. I had to fight against these things. And that's how I joined the political str the struggle for our independence. It was against this background. Did, 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 did you, there was another saying within the Christian tradition, if one smiteth thee on the cheek, turn the other cheek. And when you were a young man and you saw the injustices that were you were forced to suffer, and also the people that you were in concern for. As a young man, did you? How, how did you deal with the, um, with, that you know, the with the emotions that's right, involved in right. terms of trying to bring justice within mm -hmm. a condition where the system itself, in the legality of the system, tries to impose upon the, the the people an unjust principle? That's exactly the reason why I accepted Mahatma Gandhi's teaching. Mm -hmm which also influenced people like uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Yes, and others like that, mm -hmm. Nelson Mandela to begin with, Nelson later Oliver Tambo, mm -hmm. uh, where I had to go to prison. I had a choice mm -hmm. to go into the bush mm -hmm. with uh, an automatic weapon mm -hmm. and kill for my beliefs mm -hmm. or suffer for my beliefs by going to prison. And doing, um, you know, right. Yeah, indeed, it, 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 precisely. Uh -huh. It must have been tempting to think of taking the gun. Yes, I must say it was tempting. Yes. Uh -huh. But I, I, I found that this was a much better way. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it helped a lot. Uh, because it meant it was easier to settle issues after your independence than if you went to the bush. Yes. But I've never condemned those who, have gone to, who found it necessary to go to the bush. Right. I never condemned and them. And you could understand it. I understood yeah, yeah. why they had to do that. Surely. Right. Yeah. For example, in my case, yeah. it was easy for me to fly over to Britain mm -hmm. and speak to the British people, appeal to them over the head of the British government. Yes. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't easy. In those old days, mm -hmm. for those in Portuguese colonies, mm -hmm to go to to Portugal, the, the otherwise they, they, they suffered something. Yes, uh -huh. So uh, I, how could I blame late uh, Mondulani, late uh, Samara Machel, late NATO for going to take to, to the gun? Mm -hmm. I couldn't blame, blame them at all. Mm -hmm. I supported them. Mm -hmm. I offered them Zambia as a base. Yes, indeed. We started, I, I told you, mm. we suffered as a yeah. result of that. Mm -hmm. But coming to my own case, it was easier for me, therefore, to become a passive resistant mm -hmm. that uh, um, Mahatma Gandhi style, mm -hmm. uh, defy the British authorities in Northern Asia. Mm -hmm. They arrest me, send me to prison. I go there, suffer, get out, continue my struggle. Mm -hmm. Arrest me again, put me back, I get out, arrest me again, put me back. In the end, the said the chap is determined, let's try them and his colleagues. Yeah. And then we got out and last time we went to prison, we came out and um, we, it was independence. How many, if I may, how many times did you have to go to prison? And how much time did you have to serve in prison? 
There's a lot of suffering, mm. uh, but I went to prison, uh, well, first time I was in prison with my leader. S uh, second time I left my leader because he accepted a constitution which was not good for us. Mm. So I left him and formed another party. Uh, the first organization was the African N National Congress Northern Asia. I was part of that, right. and then um, when that was when I I, I left, this was 1958, with a team of young young people like myself. In those days, mm -hmm. we formed what was called the Zambia African National Congress. That's where our name name of the Republic of Zambia comes from. Yes, right, right. And um, we struggled. Uh, now I began. On, on our own now, in our own party, to defy the Northern Asia government as the British government representatives there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they arrested me. And instead of sending me to prison, they sent me into internal exile. Internal, internal exile. Mm -hmm. That is away from home to another part of, the Zamb of Zambia, Northern Asia, on the border with Angola. Mm -hmm. That's where they sent me. Uh, yes, some sort of compound. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was a indeed. Mm -hmm. And um, there they preached to the people that uh, this man who is coming likes tender flesh of a human being. <laughs> so <laughs> get, get, out. <laughs> get away from him. Don't yes, go near him yes, at all. Yes, yes. So when I, I have natural love, what I call natural love for children, mm -hmm. so when I arrived at this place, <laughs> I tried to give the children they run away from me. <laughs> <laughs> it is so foolish when people do they propagate yes. information. But uh, in no time at all, yes. schoolboys and girls were around there, yes. wanted to know what this strange animal was doing here. Yes, and, uh, right. <laughs> so they came and they couldn't stop them. Yeah, in the end, I was able to use that fire. opportunity now <laughs> to. So when they saw that, uh, they arrested me mm. and uh, sent me to prison this time for 13 months. 13. And uh, can't keep a good man down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, they couldn't keep, imprison me in, in Zambia, Northern Asia. Mm -hmm. So they took me to, sent me to Southern Asia. Mm -hmm. It was part of the Federation of Religion Yasland. Mm -hmm. Then, and uh, I was imprisoned in Salisbury then, Harare today, uh, for 13 months. And uh, from there, we began to campaign again, we continued to campaign. It was very difficult for us, for the police were on us all the time. Really? Yeah. Uh, but we struggled and struggled. We were banished from certain areas. And uh, in my own province, I was banished from 12 different chiefs areas. Really? 12. Different areas? Different areas. I wouldn't go there if I went there. The, by the Northern Asia government. Mm, that's the British government. Okay, and these yeah, areas, what do you got? Uh, or areas? chiefs areas, areas of society, or uh -huh. districts, just districts. Yeah, uh, districts. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right. Mm. Mm. And they, they, well, they, they, they said they stopped me from entering those areas. And How much uh, is left you, that you can uh, go to? Well, well, well I can go to Dan and Elba. <laughs> 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 we still, we, yeah. we still went there yeah. at night, and all sorts of things, funny things. Yes, right, right. And in the end, of course, we succeeded and uh, got our independence. Yeah. And I think we established a much better society than uh, they did. Now, for us, if you could, what year was the year and the day and of what independence? Is the day of celebration? Mm. Yeah, yeah, July 4th. 24th October 1964. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and how did that fit in, if you could, and share? Excuse my... No, no, it's, it's important. I, I appreciate that. Yes. We, 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 we selected this date because uh, that's the date on which we formed this party, I see. which won us independence. And what year was that formed? We formed in 1958. One formed in 1958. Uh -huh. We formed this party on 24th October, uh -huh. 1958. I see, right. So we still remember that date. Mm -hmm. And when we became independent, it was for us to select the date. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So we chose 24th October, 1964. Do you remember well that day? Yes, very much indeed. The British, <laughs> British, uh, <laughs> the British uh, um, government uh, sent one of the royal family, member of the royal family, Ooh. a lady, yeah. uh, Princess. Uh, ah, now this is serious. One of the royal. Uh, one of the royal royalties. Yes, thank you. <laughs> she came, a very honourable lady, and um, she represented Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. Uh, and uh, midnight, mm -hmm. it 
24th October, 23rd of 24th October. 23rd of 24th. Uh -huh. Midnight, yeah. the they British flag up. was lowered, the Zambian flag went up. And the national anthem was played. And the international anthem play was yeah. played indeed. Yeah. Yeah, quite that right. must have been a towering moment. Oh, uh, it was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Never did like that before. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, uh, it was joy throughout the Republic. Indeed. And all our friends came to join us uh, yes. from different parts of the world. Uh -huh. And uh, we rejoiced together. Thanked God mm -hmm. and the people of Zambia for their struggle. And the next um, day got up and wondered, now what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. I'll we tell you one thing. <laughs> we were, in the, in the first day, uh -huh. I got up and uh, I was sitting, the governor, or the British governor, used to sit at the head of the table, yes. and I was the other side of the table. Yes. And uh, when I got up before the day, 24th, <laughs> I forgot that Dinah was in charge. Yeah, yeah. I went back to sit where I was. <laughs> <laughs> and then did you say, wait a minute? No. Yeah. Uh -huh. My, yeah. the waiter came yeah. and said, no, sir. Yeah. I said, hey, this is what I came yeah. and said, no, sir, you belong there now. Yes, yes. The governor will come and sit. Yeah. Outgoing governor come and sit here. Right, so right. Yeah. <laughs> we changed the place uh, and uh, bade farewell to him, uh -huh. a great Englishman. And uh, so even the one, he was called. And we, uh, we took him to the airport and uh, saw him off. And after you did that, and you assumed that responsibility, you had many, many responsibilities, a different order of struggle. Yes. In a certain mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. and, uh, That's true. So then you could have, in a certain sense, devoted all your effort toward Zambia. Yes. But did you feel also that you had a sense of responsibility to your kindred strugglers in other areas around the world? Uh, around the area, the region. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that dimension of how much you felt a responsibility for others, for the wider regional issues that people that were still suffering for what you had been able to achieve relative to the needs of developing just the Zambia itself. Mm -hmm. Well, guided by that um, holy teaching, uh, God says, we have made man our image. Who am I to sit down and say, all is well with me, when the people in Angola, mm -hmm. the people in Mozambique, yeah. in North, South Rhodesia, mm -hmm. in Southwest Africa, Namibia, and South Africa, mm -hmm. were suffering. Yes, we had an obligation to assist them. As I tried to indicate earlier, they could not fight the way we fought. Yeah. They took to Gun, a different system indeed. Yeah, different system. So we had to support them. Mm -hmm. We had an obligation. By our beliefs, right. the human race is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this was a matter of deep rooted principle. Let me give an example. A matter of what? Sir? Deep rooted principle. Yes, I Deep rooted yes. principle. One day, just about when Zimbabwe was being reborn, mm -hmm. southern Rhodesia was turning mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. the, the young people was going out. Yeah. But Mugabe was coming in. Mm -hmm. One of the leaders, a vice president of the party, one of the parties that had come together to, to get the independence, came to visit us to take a farewell. Mm -hmm. There was a national council of my party, mm -hmm. and I was addressing that party. I made these remarks. Um, you colleagues, comrades, you are now taking over responsibility for running the affairs of uh, Zimbabwe, reborn. I want you to know that if you started doing what Smith was doing to you mm -hmm. against the whites, mm -hmm. we would denounce you. Uh -huh. okay. We would denounce you. Mm -hmm. Right. Some reverse. Uh, precisely. Yeah. Yeah. Because away from the vengeance. Precisely. Precisely. Because um, um, two wrongs don't make a right at all. Sometimes it's hard for people to be wrong. Mm -hmm. but but precisely, mm -hmm. precisely. But thank God, yes. all around us, including the great Nelson Mandela, yes. all around us, Amazing. they have yes. never mm -hmm. sought revenge or vengeance at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, that has made me very happy, mm -hmm. very happy indeed. And I, I much obliged to our colleagues mm -hmm. who have uh, thought this way of rebuilding their, their countries. Mm -hmm. Because what the the, the white people of South Africa did, which affected us in Northern Asia, mm -hmm. was wrong. We condemned it. We fought it Absolutely. and won. Mm -hmm. Having won, yeah. we had no moral mm -hmm. or even political right mm -hmm. to reverse the trend, mm -hmm. begin 
treating them as badly as they treated us yes, right. when they were in office. Even though there might be a human inclination. But, but to do that, indeed, yeah, that's very true. Common, very, very, very true. true. Very, very, very true. Right. Right. To where then and one thing feeds another and it gets into a cycle well of put, violence. Well know? put. And that's why we had to warn each other mm -hmm. that that is not the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And one, uh, one of our one of our great poets in England, well, England, English background. Uh, very good. <laughs> but in any event, one of the great poets from, England, from the United Kingdom, James Joyce, said, history is a nightmare from which we're attempting to awaken. Uh, and in a certain sense, when one awakens, begins to awaken from a nightmare, you can put that mm, aside and move right. into the light mm. of a new of a, of a new dawn. All right. And that's All important. Right. All right, indeed. Yeah. All right, indeed. So, in a sense, wanted to support others. Yeah. Uh, quite indeed. So, when uh, they became independent, fortunately, as I said, they, they did not seek vengeance at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of race relations, these have been very good in all these countries. In those countries? All those countries, okay. including our own. Mm -hmm. Amazing what's in South Africa. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle. That, what is a miracle. Mm -hmm. When uh, the World Council of Churches I was then out of office at that time. Uh, they, they asked me to co-lead a church delegation, World Council of Churches, mm -hmm. to go and monitor elections in, 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 in South Africa. And uh, these were on 27th and 28th of April. Mm -hmm. uh, 28th April is my birthday. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, oh, this is soon. 19, yes, yeah, soon to come. come, come. Your birthday. <laughs> yeah, right. okay. uh, I, it was a great birthday present. Mm -hmm. I thank the Lord because of my participation in the struggle with the people of Zambia. Mm -hmm. I led them into that struggle. Uh, thank God. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I felt great to see long queues mm -hmm. on 27th and 28th. Voting day. Voting day. Yes. Black, white, yellow, and brown. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. If some people had got, got and made green, mm -hmm. they would have been there. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. I, all going into the same, same direction. Did, did it. To vote? No, no. Right, 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 right. So I said, this is great God. This, yeah. is, this is great. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, peace and be unto you. And um, so I witnessed that. Um, it, it's uh, it's, uh, you, you mentioned the word, it's a miracle, mm -hmm. which reminded me of this, because of this, because as we're going around, uh, a, a, a press man uh, came to me and said, how do you feel now? Yes. He had known about our participation in that struggle. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, young man, this is a miracle. Mm -hmm. This was 27th. 28th, he came back and said, how do you feel today? I said the miracle is growing bigger and bigger. <laughs> I'm glad to say the miracle had continued to grow even bigger. That miracle had legs. Uh, yes, indeed. It has worked quite right. Uh -huh. um, so it's been, uh, for me, the, my, our colleagues who fought for independence and fought our assistance gave us a great opportunity to participate in a great experiment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of human relations. Yes, right. You fight. You fight for the what's better. When those who are fighting for what is better win, they don't seek revenge. Mm -hmm. They want to build something better. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, 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 a historical fact that should not be forgotten mm -hmm. by the Some, human race. Sometimes in the face of the injustice, it's necessary for armed struggle. Yes. Oh, yes. In some cases, Certainly. Varies, but once one achieves um, victory, you must be attempt to be a real leadership mm -hmm. is if you can be magnanimous in, yeah, precisely. in, in, in victory. That's correct. The mark of a, Co correct. Of a real leader. Yeah, correct. Correct. That's mm -hmm. how right. Yeah. Magnanimous in victory. Oh, yes. In the sense of victory. It's very yeah, difficult very sometimes. Difficult sometimes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, um, I think we thank God that all those in the, uh, leaders in our countries, our countries, those Southern Africa, have sought and won, have sought independence, won independence, their independence and have remained sensible, shall I say, mm -hmm. and uh, that is the right things. I right wonder way. if I might ask you, there's a new order of challenge, if it is once the independence is won, and let's say regionally we have done that, there's a new order of challenge and responsibility, you've won the liberation struggle, and then the question is, now what? Exactly. How are we to develop this, and how mm -hmm. are we, as a country or as a region, 
to relate to the outer world. Mm -hmm. We have the International Monetary Fund. We have the World Bank. We have different notions of developmental uh, policy and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit of how you see that region relating to the broader world and the trends in that, maybe even bringing it up to the present. You were 27 years in position of major responsibility mm -hmm. and desire. I wonder if you could address that, that the relationship of that region, your country in that region, to the broader world, and then some of the political economic realities of trying to work in this world, the way it is structured, and mm -hmm. we get around to some suggestions yeah. for how yeah. it might be made better if you look around. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, at independence, uh, shall I talk about what the situation was Please. in terms of Please economic, and, uh, uh, well, <laughs> you kind of, uh, but at independence, we had only, as I said, uh, a few graduates, university graduates, yeah. 100, 1,120 young men and women who had done their senior secondary schooling. And only a hundred odd universities? Right? Only. Uh, only, and there were three doctors, medical doctors, three amongst, doctors amongst those. Uh, All right, that, that begins to put it in perspective. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, economic term, in economic terms, mm -hmm. all that a black Zambian had by way of business was what they are called a T cut, a cut, uh, C A R T, a cut. Mm -hmm. You're pushing a cut. Yes, a cut. Uh -huh, and you're selling tea for that cut. Right. That's what the business as a black Zambian was able to do in those dead out days. That's all they had been able to do. They have been allowed to, uh, to do. By, by, okay. by the powers that be. Yes. That were in those days. That were. Were in those days. <laughs> <laughs> so the yes. powers, the powers that, that were. Yes, that's me indeed. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, of course, highest was running a tea room. All right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. A type of business. Mm -hmm. So we had to bring in uh, Zambians. You talked about philosophy, first of all. Mm -hmm. What type of philosophy do we follow? We called, I was fortunate you mentioned it, humanism. Yes. It yes. was a Christian based philosophy. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Christian based philosophy. Mm -hmm. But we did not, as the current regime has done, look down upon other faiths. Zambia was secular. Okay. And indeed, at independence, when it comes to celebrations, the Muslims were there, invited. Mm -hmm. Hindus were there. Mm -hmm. Jews were there. Mm -hmm. Christians were there. Mm -hmm. They all came, their, their priests, their leaders came to the celebrations, and we're allowed to say prayers. In, in the name of a humanistically oriented open society? Precisely. Concept? Precisely. That's important. Precisely. Very important. That indeed. there be toleration. Precisely. Of the different okay, right. That's very important. Yeah. Very yes. Important. Yes. 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 Because I'm, we've known that uh, mm -hmm. many wars in this world have been fought along religious lines. Mm -hmm. Or lines. Anyone yeah. who thinks they have the absolute truth. Very dangerously. Very dangerously. Uh, so we, we, we were a secular country and they allowed everybody to worship their own way and try it each other. Um, in this respect, I found the, the current Pope, Pope's philosophy very interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm Protestant, yes. he's Catholic, and yet I, I, I praise that man very much indeed yes. mm -hmm. because he brings people from very different religions, he brings them. Milan, last one, I think, they met there and discussed, exchanged the views of how to tolerate each other, how to work together. Mm -hmm. For the same line of thought, no one has the monopoly of knowing what God is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of us are, are believers. Oh. That's all we are. From Buddhists? From, yeah, and, and all, all of us. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> that is a great contribution he's, he's making also towards to, uh, this type of thing. But we were only in our small country trying to do that on a small scale, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the poverty stickiness of the black Zambians, mm -hmm. we brought about humanism as a philosophy, which would embrace everybody in the country without Ooh. discrimination. Bertrand Russell? Or some of the, some of the inspirational um, 
don't know. Of this one. Well, you know, it, it was, uh, as I said, uh, uh, Gandhi in terms of political struggle, yeah. I, I, I have been influenced through by many uh, people of socialist thought. Okay. But I, we called it humanism because it was, uh, as I said, Christian based. Uh, okay. On the best of love, thy neighbor, do unto others. Uh -huh. Now, in economic terms, how do you interpret that? Yes, right. Yeah. And how do you interpret that in economic terms? we sought to empower mm -hmm. all our people regardless of color mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that meant taking some strict action which might be misinterpreted to mean that we are discriminating against others we didn't precisely well put yeah. uh, well played that's just, just effectively put uh, level the playing field yeah. mm -hmm. how do you do that economically politically we've done it mm -hmm. we're now in charge yes. now economically how do we do that mm -hmm. we took over controlling interests in a number of major firms. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did that for a long time. Until 1989, I wrote to four merchant banks, mm -hmm. asking them to come and help us liberalize the economy. These are from London or from where? Well, some, two from America, uh -huh. two from, right. from, two mm -hmm. from Britain. Mm -hmm. The idea was that uh, we should liberalize the economy now because we had succeeded through this process to create a huge middle class of black Zambians also. To, uh, what, what, what year period now are you talking? You had your uh, 64 to 89. I see. Okay, so these... 1964 to 89. If I may, from where you had a, a hundred university graduates and three medical doctors to where you had a, a goodly sized middle class <laughs> and education, there was a great deal going on there that we should Sorry. go into in detail. We've we've done done right, right, right. You've done a great deal. A lot of things that have happened. I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. So we thought we could now liberalize the economy. Mm -hmm. Let the people Zambian, the individual Zambians, take over controlling of the interest as they became available. I mean, I became able to do. Mm -hmm. Available and able to do. So we were in that process when the present people took over in 1991. Uh, now, when we say, how do we relate to international organizations? First of all, within the region, we had what we called uh, frontline countries. Yes. Frontline countries were those countries now which have become independent, mm -hmm. and we are now fighting to liberate South Africa yes. itself. Yes. That's right. These countries were mm -hmm. Zambia, of course. Zimbabwe, Angola, Mozambique, Namibia, uh, uh, Botswana, uh, Swaziland, Lesotho, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mauritius, Seychelles. These are islands now. Yes, uh, islands. Uh, Mauritius Island, uh, Battle of the Asia, certainly. And uh, this was frontline countries, and I was honored to be chairman. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Well deserved. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so first chairman was uh, Julius Nyerere of Tanzania. Yeah, another chairman. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, <laughs> thank you. you were a close uh, friend. Very, very true. You had many personal good cups of personal coffee. friends as well as uh, indeed uh, uh, beautiful allies, mm -hmm. I shall put it that way. And when he retired from office in uh, 85, I took over. Uh -huh. And uh, my colleagues uh, elected me. I remember when I was uh, being elected chairman of the frontline countries in Mozambique, um, I said, uh, please, I was telling my colleagues, head of health, heads of state, uh, there can only be one Julius Nyerere, mm -hmm. so don't expect miracles from me at all. Uh, yet, uh, let uh, Samuel Machel uh, stood up and said, yes, that's true, but there can also be only one Kenneth Kaunda. I was going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very touching uh, yes. moment for me. Uh -huh. He said, yes, we agree. Uh -huh. There's only one just in but there's also one, only one Kenneth Kaunda. Yes, uh, uh, yes. uh, so uh -huh. we continued to fight, of course, until South Africa became independent. Yes. Now, yes, now, at that time, we also had Botswana, yes. a chairman of uh, SADC, Southern African Development uh, conference. That was a regional... Regional area, uh, uh, exactly. All same countries, yeah. but uh, working on, on economic development, okay. in cooperation, mm -hmm. together. Uh, yeah. 
uh, Southern African Development Coordinating Conference, uh, SADC in those days, yes. It's now SADC with one C, Southern African Development, uh, uh, what's that? Conference. Conference, yes. Conference. yes. And uh, it, it, con it, con it continues now, exactly. Okay. It's no longer now, it's no longer uh, political. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. right. But there is a political committee mm -hmm. under it, under Robert Mugabe. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, Nelson Mandela is the chairman of the Southern African Development co 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 Conference. And that's a major conference? It is. Okay. It is. Very, very powerful very unit. Serious, very powerful unit indeed. Mm -hmm. An economic unit, and it's worth doing, can do wonders. Can we, can we want to make South Africa itself an engine for our development? South Africa, the engine. The engine for development efforts. Oh, yeah. It is an engine. It is a, mm -hmm. And uh, Robert Mugabe is uh, mm -hmm. a chairman of the political and defense committee yes. of certain countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the need is there for political action still. Mm -hmm. The need for political action okay, it's a is the continuous of the end of the Precisely, precisely. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So that's how we are developing there. Now you ask what about our relations with other organizations, international yeah, organizations. Structural redevelopment. Yes, and certainly. We were, we are members of the IMF, World Bank, mm -hmm. uh, and many other international organizations. Mm -hmm. We work cooperatively with the European Union, for example, uh, and other Commonwealth countries. We are busy working together. We belong to one world, and there's no way one can be any one country can escape that. We are members of our one world. Now what if that one world tries to establish a system that you must be answerable to? It's a little bit like when you were in colonial status, they would say yeah. there's a colonial status, you must accept certain principles that we say like apartheid, <laughs> because it's, and they'll even say that's God-given, or they'll give some sort of a, or that it's inherently efficient or something, and that they impose or set up a world system that you feel is unjust or unworkable, mm, right. or is the world system as it exists, monetary fund, and, and, and the, the way it exists now, is there any stru is there any uh, system inefficiencies or inappropriateness to the way the world is now, or is it just a matter of working out the major assumptions by which we try and operate, or is there still need for some sort of comprehensively seen reordering of the world uh, relationship between all the peoples, including the developed and the developing world? You obviously, you obviously have thought about these matters very deeply, I can see that. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, uh, certain areas where uh, organizations like IMF, World Bank, uh, do impose some of the conditions which bring out of suffering mm -hmm. to developing countries. Uh, and. Uh, but in fairness to them, when you argue a case strongly, mm -hmm. they do listen. Yeah. All right, that's yes. important. That, that's important, indeed. Mm -hmm. They do listen. They do listen. And uh, so we do differ with them sometimes. And uh, they come, we discuss again at one stage. We even left the IMF. We had to go back again because uh, although that same year when we left mm -hmm. IMF, we did very well in terms of agriculture. We, you At the first time we did 6.3, uh, 6 I think. Now what does that tell us? In terms of uh, agricultural development. On that one year? Though. About one year. Yeah, we no, did very well. That was good range. We had sat through. But also worked hard. Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I yeah. Mm. So um, it is important that uh, the, the condi conditions, <coughs> existing conditions in any given country mm -hmm. are taken into consideration when uh, World Bank, IMF, and other organizations which help us in development efforts come to look at your places, what they, what they want you to achieve. Mm -hmm. I say this uh, because, you know, I think what we need more is fair conditions of trade All right. rather than aid. Okay. Why do I say that? At the moment, what we sell in the markets of the West, developed West, mm -hmm. we sell at the giveaway prices. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what we buy from there, by all the uh, 
industry, industrial machine and so on, we pay through the nose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is a situation that cannot long endure. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid so, yes, it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, but it has hit us very hard. Yes, uh, protectionism. All these are very ugly conditions for us. They make things very difficult for mm -hmm. developing countries. I would rather we had fair trade means, or means of trade, than depend on aid. Uh, because if you have fair means of trade, you'll be able to sell what you, you have, you produce more and more. At the moment, everything is under control of those who buy from us. Yeah, and they have world trade organizations. Exactly. And these things they, are developed. They themselves work quite well there. Uh -huh. Uh, I remember once, once we, 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 I have never forgotten that experience. <laughs> we, I sent ministers to the, 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 it was what was it called the uh, orders, um, uh, it's WTO now, World Trade Organization now. But what was it? Oh, GATT? Or, no, no. Um, yeah, I don't remember. I can't. Think yeah, I think it was GATT. I think. Um, yes, yeah, it was GATT. I think. Yeah. I sent a delegation there of my my, my minister, ministers. And uh, the others who sent on the other presidents on the continent of Africa sent to them. And <laughs> differences arose between the American, USA, and Europe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they went to meet in a separate hall. I mm -hmm. uh, told African ministers to wait for them. It was so hot there, mm -hmm. the difference between the USA and Europe. You mean the fight? Politically. Politically. No, no. Right, right. <laughs> it right. became right. so, yeah. uh, differed so much yeah, yeah, yeah. that the, the, I don't know which delegation worked out, either the Americans or the Europeans mm -hmm. worked out on the conference and they left. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. African delegations were waiting in the, in the main hall, yeah. waiting for the Europeans and the uh, <laughs> Americans to come back. Yeah. Yeah, for a whole, Whole yeah, afternoon, somebody remember, home, really? remember them in the afternoon that they were still waiting. Yeah, really. They came and told the story, you come and over. Uh -uh. uh, Americans and the British have gone. This was, I think, somewhere in the Newfoundland, somewhere uh -huh. there, they were meeting uh -huh. there. Yes. So what happened? The, the conference ended uh -huh. without the, uh, the Africans knowing, contributing anything. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, uh, I'm, I can, I'm trying to demonstrate yes, yes. Yes, sir. how weak a position we're in yes. because of these bad uh, trade organizations. Uh, in the world today. So what can be done, or ought to be done, or what might we suggest? Well, really, it's uh, until we grow stronger ourselves, mm -hmm. I'm afraid I can't see what uh, it is that can be done. Okay. okay. Because every country is protecting its own interests, uh -huh. unfortunately. Yes, right. And, and, yeah, and the divisions, indeed. Uh -huh. uh, that's why, as I say, here you have uh, Europeans, white, uh, Americans, white, mm -hmm. Uh, and nothing to do with the color, yeah, right. but uh, something with the stomach. But they've had a long-term mm -hmm. long situation of being in great advantage. Yes, oh yes. And it's built Certainly. up over a long uh, time. That's why we, we are in that weak position. Yes, right. Yes, yes. So, as I say, so long as the situation exists as it is now, mm -hmm. what we sell in other markets, developed, the developed countries' markets, we sell at given prices, what we buy from there, we pay through the nose, mm -hmm. We're in a very weak position. You said that in the 27 years that you were there, going from 100 university graduates when you took, uh, to, you know, when you were there, yes. so yeah. had to where there was a great deal of development. Yes. Uh, a great deal had been done, and in other countries there is a great deal that is developing. Mm -hmm. There's development that's going, on, great challenges and so forth. Are the conditions there to where um, uh, the, the trade issue and the relationship to the broader world? Is it, n it, it can, can things be done internally or, you know, within the situation of the countries that exist, or is this relationship to the uh, outside world with the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and so forth, absolutely essential in order to get things like education, infrastructure, and the kind of things that are needed, or can there be development uh, with people walking out of conferences in a peak of uh, arrogant, uh, you know? If, if I've got the question correctly, mm -hmm. uh, if I've got it right, um, in terms of uh, no country can remain uh, in an island at all. Mm -hmm. We've got to cooperate with other countries, mm -hmm. we've got to cooperate with other continents, all over the world. 
there is need for cooperation, coordination, and so on, so on. Uh, uh, but one, one is only asking that uh, we think of creating conditions that will be favorable to all. How that can be done, I don't know. I'm not sure myself that uh, what we are doing today uh, is going to bring about the changes that I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, uh, the Uganda has been mentioned as a successful experiment. But then you've got to understand that Uganda has got some wonderful conditions. They've got what you call matoki, bananas, yeah. big bananas. And the, the, the conditions there are such that the rains are falling all the time, almost all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is not to deny President Museveni and his people yes, indeed. The, the praise that we yes, have absolutely, to do them. Absolutely, yeah. But we have to also remember that uh, they have some very favorable conditions. The Matoki banana, the banana is a big uh, things it, yeah, it, right. it feeds people, yeah, that's right. and they're growing bananas all the time. Currency, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. So um, they have succeeded; they're succeeding, uh, but they have those favorable conditions uh, which don't exist in many parts of the other parts of the, other, the, other, the country. Do, do you the think, content. Do, do, you, do you think the region, the region that you're mm -hmm. so familiar mm -hmm. with, and so forth, that it is in a certain sense both in natural and human resources a rich region? Well, if it could, but when I say, and it would have an internal market, market exactly, it could begin to develop exactly, itself, precisely. Uh, you know, remember I said earlier on that we would like to make South Africa mm -hmm. our engine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of develop our developmental efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, we have what what close on three hundred million people there you are. in that region. Yeah. It's a big population, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, we have rivers. Potential. We have rivers. There are good rivers. Some of them running all year round. Yeah. Um, beautiful uh, fertile lands. Mm -hmm. We have um, a lot of uh, rich minerals, mineral areas, uh, gold, copper, mm -hmm. um, uh, platinum, uh, silver, diamond. All those uh, do uh, are there. And human resources. Uh, and then of course human resources. Uh, computers. Yeah, but kinds of things indeed, indeed. Yes, they're true. They're there. They're there. So. Uh, we can build dams mm -hmm. to develop our agriculture. Mm -hmm. We can do many great things. Uh, but they will need a lot of investment. You think there's an okay. Mm -hmm. And because of the policies we have taken so in almost all these countries, we are attracting capital. Yeah. And uh, I think South Africa, I, I go back to it, will be able to assist us uh -huh. in terms of um, our developmental efforts. Do you, do you think if there's capital, uh, South Africa is very close, part of the region, brother, sister, sister country, if you have capital from outside the region, do you think that it can be brought in without uh, strings attached? Does it work uh, or detrimental or can there be a worked out? Well, I think that the strings that will be attached to any capital like that, sensible capital, mm -hmm. would be to get their profits out. Mm -hmm. So that they're able to get their profits out, what else do they need? Could we set it up to where they could get a reasonable profit out and still uh, yes, benefit? Yes, they're better to set it up. Behind, indeed, yes. That's been so, a problem throughout the Yes, that's all, true, right? that's true, mm -hmm. uh, that's true, mm -hmm. uh, that's true. But I think uh, people are becoming more and more sensible these days. Uh, think? They, I think so. Are you more optimistic mm -hmm. now than you were at certain, let's say, 10, 12 years ago? Some people are very upset with the direction that the world is going now, with the structural readjustment. Well, Some of the demands that are being made on... Uh, structural adjustment programs are very, can be very devastating. Uh, uh, but I think that uh, as we become stronger... Yes. And we are as becoming stronger I as a region think, all I the think time. As a region. I think we are. I think we are. Despite the difficulty. I think we are. Okay. I think we are. I think we are. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for now, of course, the, the struggle, particular struggle, is over. Mm -hmm. So we're concentrating on economic development. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Some countries are doing quite fairly well. There are still some uh, difficulties internally. Nah. You know, yes, in yes. That will take a bit of time. Yes, right. Okay. Um, yeah. Some countries, you know, we... we Colonialism, colonialism, imperialism, colonialism, yeah. 
did not teach democracy. Right. Okay. They taught divisions of yes, people. Yes, yes. They survived okay. on divide precisely. Mm -hmm. Well put. Mm -hmm. They survived on divide and rule. Mm -hmm. And so long as the, this 40, 40 years, 50 years, it's not long, it's not long at all. Yeah. And the people are still divided in terms of tribes, in some areas in terms of color even. Mm -hmm. uh, so long as these things exist, they will delay yeah. our development. Right. But they are being worked on, yeah. uh, worked upon, and uh, there should be, we should reach a stage when uh, there are more, more uh, um, uh, quiet, more uh, peace, more development, uh, which will bring about what the people demand of us as leaders. Yeah, very, mm. very good. There's so much. We could go on talking for about 16 hours. Even, <laughs> you know, just begin to scratch the surface. We, we've begun, uh, you know, just to touch the surface. But I, I do really thank you very much. And that it might be just worth mentioning that we are here in the uh, Libyan Jamaharia mm. and have uh, with, uh, with uh, Mr. Muammar Gaddafi. And there is this world here that it's well to be for the people of the southern part of Africa it's well for them to be in touch with these people and there might be he's worked some uh, miracles here this water project that he's done and other kinds of things yes. and this is a, an area of the world that the African area could well be in touch with in appropriate ways it's a pity that uh, he has been uh, looked at as uh, a dangerous man in terms of the world. Western Hemisphere, a very pity indeed, because um, <coughs> uh, he is a man who has done so much for his country, yes, indeed. so much for his country, yes, and uh, even yesterday I took note of what he was saying. He said this, where to the effect that he thought he he hoped that uh, President Clinton would not follow what his predecessors yeah. did. I thought it was a very sensible thing to say. Again, back to that idea of yeah. how you ought to be more magnanimous <laughs> or understanding. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Arrogant. Yeah. Yeah. Arrogance of power is a problem. Precisely. So really, it's a, it's a pity because there's, we in Africa, most of us at least, or some of us, uh, value greatly what he is doing for his country. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, the commissioner that he is. He is doing a great deal for his country. He is indeed. What we, what we have seen here in this city, uh, it sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. you know, well, we have a housing yeah. project yeah. where we went yesterday, a new city completely. Yeah. It's fantastic. I know, yes, I know. You well, know the roads and everything. Yes, I know. Well, <laughs> agriculture, agriculture. Yeah, right. This is what the project you have mentioned. I want to see it myself. Yeah, right. So really, and he's not, uh, he's not a, he, he is a great uh, believer in God. He's yes, uh, right. Allah. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Allah, the co co compassionate, uh, Allah, the merciful, mm -hmm. he believes in Allah. Yes, right. mm -hmm. And everything he does is about, about Allah. Mm -hmm. the, the, temp the, the mosques he has built for his mm -hmm. people and so on, yeah. all that shows that he's a, a very sensible man. Yes, indeed. And I'm um, sorry I've been banned so badly misunderstood. I hope time will come when the West will see sense in working with him. Well, I think the West and the United States in general, if I may, apologize in a certain sense for the ignorance of so much that is done by the country <laughs> which I come, uh, has been directed at many parts of the world uh, for a long period at the part of the world that you have helped to bring liberation and new hope and light to, and also to this part of the world. And maybe we just hope maybe this interview or this program might help to enlighten some of the people there so that we might all begin to move in 